35. Well, some good news for those with sleep apnea. There's another option out there besides the CPAP machine, and it's being done right here in the DMV at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. Joining me now, both Dr. Stanley Cha and patient Bill Kitchens to talk about the Inspire Therapy option. Doctor, I want to start with you, first of all, just to talk about what's different about this option. So this option is different from other surgical treatments for sleep apnea in that um, there's no actual alteration of the upper airway anatomy. Um, so it's a stimulator. So similar to the technology that pacemakers use, uh, where you sense the, the breathing, there's a lead that goes into the chest, and then there's another lead that goes up into the neck, and it stimulates the nerve that moves the tongue so that every time you take a breath in when you sleep at night, it stimulates the tongue to move forward and open up the airway. But you're, you're doing that without actually, you know, removing tissue or altering tissue inside the upper airway. So this is an actual implant. What type of process is that to have this work done? Uh, the surgical procedure is actually pretty straightforward. So it's a, we generally do this as an outpatient, so people go home the same way, the uh, same day. Um, the procedure takes about uh, two and a half hours in the operating room. It's under general anesthesia, uh, and you know people recover very well. They just have to uh, not do any real strenuous activity or heavy lifting with that right arm or neck uh, for about three or four weeks afterwards. All right. Well, let's find out how it went. Let's bring in Bill Kitchens, who is a uh, patient. Bill, good to have you with us this morning. Uh, First of all, before we ask you how that process went, tell me what it was like for you before you underwent this process. Uh, well, the CPAP worked for a while for me, but eventually it uh, it wasn't working as well. The uh, machine, I seem to be waking up gasping quite often, and my rest wasn't as good as it should be. So I uh, went to my local pulmonologist, uh, Dr. Jody Shaw in MedStar St. Mary's, and she recommended me to go up the road, and uh, it's been much better since then. So when you first got that recommendation and, and you were first looking at other options, uh, were, you, were you apprehensive at all about uh, doing something different or, or maybe even with the implant? What were your thoughts at the time? Uh, no, I had no apprehension about it at all. The procedure was explained to me. and I had uh, faith and trust in the process, and it turned out to be a good choice. So tell me about that a little bit. How has it been for you since you had the process done? Well, when I travel, I take them. Sorry. <laughs> I take that with me when I go on the road instead of the huge CPAP. And I just turn that on before I go to bed at night, 15 minutes later after I fall asleep. It uh, does its magic and I sleep much better and I don't wake up gasping for air like I used to. I mean, that's that's the goal in the end. Uh, you know, doctor, is this the kind of thing in, in the medical community that we're going to hear more and more about? Uh, do you think that it's, it's going to become more mainstream and more of an option for people? And and the second it's a two part question. Uh, the second part is, is, is it cost prohibitive? Is, is that the reason why maybe we're not seeing more of it now as opposed to the CPAP? Well, CPAP is still the first uh treatment of choice. So uh, in order to qualify for the Inspire device, you have to have tried and not been able to tolerate the CPAP. So that's still the first line uh, treatment for the obstructive sleep apnea. However, when uh, people are unable to tolerate the sleep uh, the CPAP machine, then uh, we're actually seeing this as probably the primary surgical option for people in order to treat the obstructive sleep apnea. Um, so we're, we're doing more and more of these procedures. It's very well accepted as one of the most successful surgeries that are out there. And insurance companies have been very good about covering this device now. Like in the early days when it was a new technology, we had more problems with insurance coverage. But now we're having very few problems as long as people meet the criteria. Yeah, always good news for patients there. Uh, doctor, we heard Bill's story. He, he seems to be uh, very happy with the result. Uh, is, is there any risk involved here, though, for folks who might be considering this that, that are maybe having issues with their CPAP now and looking for other options? You know, as with any surgical procedure, there's risks associated with uh, it, but there's um, fairly minimal risks, uh, I would say. Like there's always the potential for uh, things like nerve weakness, uh, you know, numbness of the skin incision sites or, you know, other complications. But honestly, I, I have seen very few issues with this uh, procedure afterwards, and I've not seen any major complications. Well, listen, I, I appreciate both of you joining us. I know a lot of people obviously have, have issues with the sleep apnea and, and have to find ways to deal with it. And this is another option for those, but obviously consult with your doctor first uh, before you look into any of this. Dr. Cha, thank you so much for joining us. Bill, I appreciate you joining us as well and wish you the best. Uh, and hopefully uh, with the travel and everything else, it just makes life easier for you down the road. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. All right.